Hi, I'm Christy Simpson. Director's tip eight, how to professionally mic your actors and your choir. Let's talk about microphones. I know very little about microphones. My husband Daniel here knows a little more. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, he knows a little more. Um, you know, I wanna talk about microphones because microphones can make or break your show, as we know, right? Um, our sons are in a program right now um, in, in Burbank, a show choir, and it's like one of the best ones in the whole country. It's amazing, but the funny thing is, their microphones are amazing too, and if they did not have good microphones, it wouldn't be amazing because you wouldn't hear them. Mm -hmm. And having good microphones and good people working the microphones is really important. Uh, so the first of all, I just want to know, I want to talk about what I know, which is I want to make sure we can hear the kids. Okay. I've gone to a lot of shows, um, of people performing my musicals and you know, we all are just doing the best we can. We've got a few microphones here or there. We've got some headsets, but I've unfortunately gone to a lot of shows where the microphones aren't working. And I know you guys hate that as much as I do when it's not working, nobody can hear it. And, and if nobody hears, say you're opening three lines, they don't know what the show is about for the rest of the show. Mm -hmm. You miss really important things, which is so important. So my first tip, I wanna talk a little bit about wireless microphones um, with Daniel because he's helped me with this a lot. But I wanna start by saying, if you don't have a lot of microphones, if you don't have the budget to do something crazy, I think you should really work it around um, maybe strategically place like four different microphone stands around the stage and just have your kids walk up to it. Now I know a lot of you do this or you have them carry around a handheld or something like that. And uh, honestly, that is preferable in my opinion than to borrow these headset mics or lapel mics that are going to feed back through your whole show. And I don't know why they're feeding back. You don't know why they're feeding back. Sometimes our sound technicians know and sometimes they don't right? Because it's confusing and I don't really understand it. Right. Um, so my first tip would be like, go as basic as you can, but make sure we can hear it. Um, you're also going to want your mic people, the people running the mics to practice with you. Practice a lot mm -hmm. because that can make or break it too. If they don't know to turn on their mic, then you won't hear those important lines either. So what I say is, Okay, I've got four stand mics. Let's go most basic. I'm going to put two here at the, at the front of the stage. Then I'm going to put two here. And I'm going to instruct my actors, walk up to the mic when you speak. Then I'm going to tell my mic technician, my sound person, please leave them on the whole time. Leave them on. I don't want to worry about them turning it off and on and forgetting because that's a lot of responsibility to put on one person. Let's just leave them on and train our kids to walk to them. Now... We've had some success with some wireless um, headset mics, lapel mics, whatever you want to call them. And so I want Daniel to speak to that because some of them apparently are very cheap and they do weird things. And some of them are better. What can you tell us about those mics? Yep. Well, there definitely is um, a large disparity in the quality of microphones when you talk about price. So your, your cheapest microphones that you would buy maybe are a couple of hundred dollars each. And um, if you were to get three or four of those on the stage with people that are moving in close proximity to one another, those mics, no matter what volume, they're gonna tend to feedback because they're close. Yeah. They're, they're close to one another. Which so, is what we hate. Right, so I would avoid the cheaper mics um, you know, and, and go for the more expensive mics, right? I mean, obviously, you... you, it's, you well, that's not well, obvious. I'm going money, on a budget. But, I yeah. wouldn't... But so is it better to have two good <clears throat> wireless mics than four cheaper ones? Absolutely. And and what we've done is our church didn't have the budget to buy a ton of microphones. In fact, when we first came to our current church, we had two only. Mm -hmm. We had one that the pastor used all the time, and then one that didn't even have a wireless uh, lapel, it was just a, a handheld mic. Mm -hmm. So our first step was to buy uh, like a headset that could go instead of the handheld. So then we had two lapels mm -hmm. or, you know. But we bought one that wasn't the cheapest model, right? That's right. Well, yeah, those, those the church already had. Oh, the right. next step after we bought that, you know, lab or head, headset mic was to actually buy an additional um you know, headset mic. Now we shopped around a little bit and asked some questions of people that we knew, our friends that had, you know, knew some stuff about mics. 
and they said make sure you, you go for the ones that are about a thousand dollars per set which is a lot of money I know crazy but um, these have the least amount of feedback when you get them in close proximity to one another so uh, and obviously that is so much money right yeah. but it might be better to work with stand mics and then over the years try to invest in a couple yeah. or but what did we do when we rented them is it the same thing or that's, what that's what we did the next thing we did was we rented some of those expensive mics from a company locally that rented equipment and that worked for a while but then we found that we were, when we were renting you know five or six microphones for a week that came out to be about a thousand dollars and we said you know we should really just ask the church if we can buy one microphone per year and, and like fundraise that. it towards it so we did right. some offerings and some giving towards it obviously a thousand dollars is a lot but i think it's worth it to note that instead of getting six microphones that are going to feed back all the time maybe you slowly start investing in the better yes. ones and that's the thing if you're going to do these rent kids, it for one or two days if you're going to do these kids choir shows uh, you know for years and years if you're thinking ahead um then your return on investment you know if you're just renting you're you're throwing that money away for that short amount of time. But if you're purchasing one, even one per year, mm -hmm. you get to keep that mic forever. You and know? these never, the, the better ones never feed back. And you know how it feels when you're doing a show and it's like, ah, feedback all the time. It brings your audience out of the moment. They get freaked out. Everybody's freaked out. The kids freak out. We don't want that. So even instead of that, um, so I, so that's a great idea. Either we can rent one if we're going to rent for one or two days, rent mm -hmm. one or two microphones, or save up and purchase one per year. Over time. Over time. Increase do your collection. Some, yeah, just increase your collection. Um, yeah. Go um, ahead. Yeah. We also, uh, at one point, um, our church decided they wanted to buy more microphones, and so they took a special offering for us and raised... Right, that's uh, how we got it. We didn't like... thousand dollars to <laughs> have buy. Have thousands of dollars yeah. laying around. They, they, they took a special offering. They showcased the kids' choir and, you know, talked about it in front of the whole church and about our ministry and said, we'd like... This is what we feel like God is leading us to do. Will you give towards this? And and so we were able to buy, I think, six or seven. And it was overwhelming. That. We yeah. have a very small church. Yeah. It was overwhelming because was awesome. they want to be able to hear their grandkids. They, they want that too. They want the word to go out. So um, that's something to go towards. But otherwise, I'd say just go for a stand mic, something that's not going to feedback, something with a wire. We have cords on our mics at church, yeah. and that just means they walk straight up to the mic with the cord. But overall, we want to hear them. We want to hear the message. We want to hear the words, and we don't want to be distracted um, by weird feedback. And we don't want the right. kids to be distracted. I have a couple other suggestions go. too. Um, I... I I suggest that you don't have kids change microphones during a show, like a costume change or anything yeah. like that, or, or say, hey, we can use, for half the show, we can use uh, Which this I character. used to do that. I used to be like, take it off and put it on the next person. Don't, I suggest that you don't do that. Mm -hmm. um, that's problematic. Uh, a lot of these microphones are fragile, and if you twist it, bump it, you know, a, micro, a wire comes loose, or suddenly that kid mm -hmm. walks onto the show and you can't hear them because the, the microphone didn't get turned back on, it's unplugged, or it broke. And, and you can't do anything about that in the middle of the show. Right. So when you're taking the microphones off of another one kid and putting them on another kid and you're putting it underneath their costume and you're trying to do it in under a minute because they have to get back out mm -hmm. on the stage, like, there's just a lot of things that can go wrong with that. So uh, that's we'll Leave that to the professionals. Don't, yeah, just put a, a microphone on a kid in the dress rehearsal or in the sound check before the show and leave it on the kid for the whole show. Don't take it. And no. honestly, if they have only eight lines, they can walk up to a mic stand and say that line. Right. It's not as glamorous, but it's worth it to not have the headache. That would be mm -hmm. my advice. So, you know, that's the very little bit that we know about microphones. Um, keep on your journey, but let's just, uh, let's avoid the fancy things and make sure we can actually hear our kids. And I think we'll have a lot less headaches. Thanks, dear. You're welcome.